Hello everyone. Now, last time we talked a little bit about how you can't see those defects with your naked eye. Um, however, there are other things that you can see and that are quite important. For example, um, grain size uh, is a microscopic characteristic, at least it's typically microscopic. But grain size can vary from one material to another. And before we talk about that, why do you think we care about grain size? Why is it, oh come on, why is it important? Well, one reason is that mechanical properties are going to depend on grain size as well as their shape. Um, we talked about how if the grains are all the same shape or just randomly, then the material properties don't change in a particular direction. However, if the grains are long and thin in one direction, well, material properties are going to depend on the grain's direction and therefore on the direction that you apply a force. Also, the smaller the grains, the larger the grains, they're all going to have an effect on the mechanical properties of your material. So you want to know, well, how large are the grains? And so you can do it with the microscope. However, sometimes grain sizes can be quite large. For example, if you find that nice crystal of quartz that's all pretty and you can see through it, you know, something like this. Those kind of things. That is actually a single grain of quartz. Um, and even in aluminum light posts and garbage cans, you can sometimes see the grains of those. However, they can also be very, very small, like less than a millimeter. You'll need a microscope to see them. Now, not necessarily an electron microscope, like an optical microscope would be fine. You'd probably be able to see it here. But otherwise, um, we'd have to think about this. Now, optical microscopy uses light, and it's helpful to about 2,000 times magnification, which is great if we're, you know, for most of what we're doing, but not for trying to get to those atomic scales. Now, one issue you might have is if you have a polished surface, it's going to remove those surface feature, like scratches and other things. However, it's not going to get rid of the grain boundaries. If you have an etched surface, what's well, going to change reflectance depending on the grain orientation, which is what actually happened right here. You can see all these different grains based on the different colors because that means that they have a different orientation of their particular planes. Some of them are very, very dark because the light is going to bounce away from that area because of how they've been etched and the angle of their surface. Some are going to be, you know, just fairly faint, or you're going to see a bit less color. That's because some of the light bounced away, but not all of it. And then so finally, some are going to be very, very bright because they have the same orientation. And even when they were etched, well, it didn't matter because of how they're, um, they're the grain orientation there. And it bounced the light back. Their particular crystal galactic planes bounced the light back. So this is one way we can figure out the different grain structures inside of a material. Now, grain boundaries are also quite susceptible to etching. And after we've etched a surface, a grain boundary is going to appear as a dark line. And you can see that right here. Now, the reason that they are susceptible to etching is because if you're scraping a material where everything is nice and hunky-dory and there's no issues, it's not going to be able to take as much material. But however, the edges at our grains, it's weaker because we have all those you know, defects. It's not going to be able to connect as well there. I'm doing my best here to draw that. And since they're not bonded together very tightly here, if at all, um, you're going to be able to knock out those atoms because they have less holding them down. Now, if you've etched the surface, so you know, you'll either be able to look at it this way, depending on how you etched it. If you're really etching hard, you'll get this. If you etch fairly lightly, it's just going to um, it's going to accentuate the grain boundaries. Also, it depends on the material, but either way, the grain boundaries are going to come into focus. And you can look at it at a certain magnification. Now, if you do that at 100 times magnification, we can begin to talk about grain size. Because this is something you want to know. Sometimes mechanical properties are already like tabulated as a function of grain size. And so you want to know what that grain size is to be able to determine, does this have the right properties for my application? 
So what we had to do is we had to come up with a standard because if we were just saying like, okay, let me count the area of each of these grains, it would get really obnoxious fairly quickly trying to figure out the area of all these very strange shapes. So what we did instead was we came up with something called the grain size number. What you do is you zoom in to 100 times magnification and you count the number of grains per inch squared at 100 times magnification. Now I'm not saying you look at how many grains are in a literal inch squared, but you take an inch by inch picture at 100 times magnification and you figure out how many are there. So that's not going to be too terrible. You can count that fairly quickly. And you can see there's a lot of variation, but it'll give you a good average for the grain size. Good average for the grain size. And if you're wondering, well, how does that actually tell me the size of these grains? You're just finding a number. It's because if you have an inch by inch section and it's at 100 times magnification, that would be 0.01 inches in both directions. Make sure I'm doing that right. It should be, yes. 100 times magnification. I'm going to go with it for now. May have made a mistake with my calculations right here. But what you can see is that if you count the number of grains, to fit in this small area, they would have to have a certain size. Now, if there are 20, they would be 1 20th of this area. So you are getting an average area for those by doing this calculation. Now, another note for this is that when we do optical microscopy, we often use polarized light. Um, that might not mean much to most of you, but polarization is simply saying that light is a wave. However, if I'm looking at it dead on, like, you know, this, this wave would look like this. However, that's not really how it is. In real life, the light can be oriented, if we're just talking about it being a wave, in any of these directions, in any one we want. And what we do to help us have more contrast is we get rid of all of those except for one. We have one direction, and it helps us have a little bit better um, contrast. And it's also really helpful for transparent samples because it can reduce how much is reflecting um, and being refracted by um, non-polarized light. Okay, so thank you for listening. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.